How's it going, everyone? It's me, Will from Ghost Hack, and today I'm going to be talking to you about Ghost Hack's newest vocal pack, the Ultimate Latin Vocals. <laughs> Now this pack comes with five different Latin vocal acapellas that you can use in your tracks, but I feel like the most interesting thing about all of this is the layers that the acapellas actually have because you don't just have the main acapella. There's also, it's also backed with like harmonies and ad libs and other backing vocals that you can see in here, some of which are singing, some of which are talking. I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about right now. So first I'm gonna go over the actual vocals and the different files that we have going here. And then after that, I'm gonna take you through the project file of the demo track that I made to go with this pack. So now you can see here are the five acapellas. We're gonna go into acapella number one, and you can see we have more than just an acapella. We have uh, the acapellas just all together. We have ad libs one, ad libs two, ad libs, ad -libs clean. There's the backing vocals. We have uh, some dubs, we have harmonies, and then just the main lead. Like there's a lot of different sounds here. Like uh, take for example, here's just the main lead. <laughs> And then we have some left and right harmonies that just pop in every now and then. And those line up with the original lead. And then here's uh, here's some more backing vocals. And you can hear what all of these sound like if you were to just take uh, the full the full acapella with everything. And since you have all the stems, we, you have access to all of the individual vocals that are playing, you know, all the time. And I'll show you exa an example of this when I'm going through the actual demo project that I have. But next up, you can hear this next acapella. Let's just take the main lead right here. This one's in E major. And here we have some backing vocals. And here we have some harmonies for that. And we also have ad libs and vocal dubs, but if you know we take all the backing vocals, just all of the back backing vocals in one track, you can hear them together. So you can hear that was there was a lot of time put into this, you know, designing those backing tracks and affecting them, and you know, bringing them all together into one mix, which you can hear right here. Yeah. And next up, here's acapella number three, where I'm just going to take the whole thing. As you can hear, even though all of these vocals are by the same vocalist and they all have that Latin vibe, they do have very different uh, styles that you can hear within them, not just from, you know, just general rhythm and beat, but also kind of the feeling you get when you listen to the progressions themselves. So I'm actually going to skip number four real quick because that's the one I used for the demo track that I'll show you in just a second, but this is the fifth one that we can have a listen to. <laughs> And 
And in that one, you can especially hear what I'm talking about when it comes to, you know, talking in the background. That's not something you find in a lot of acapellas. And that can actually be really handy, especially when you're designing a full track. There may be some elements where you want vocals, but you don't necessarily want them to be singing. And again, with all of the stems here, you can arrange these in any way you want ever. So this fourth acapella is the last acapella we have to work with. And I'm going to show you this one by just playing the demo track that I made. So I'll play it and then I'll take you through each sort of section and show you exactly what I did and why I did it. Ese movimiento uno, dos, tres Te hacen a ritmo de ese perre Perreo salvaje, perreo salvaje Ay, mátame todo lo que esto trae La izquierda, la derecha y hasta abajo siempre hay Ay, mátame todo lo que esto trae Perreo salvaje, perreo salvaje Tú sabes que me vuelvo loca con poco Que yo estoy al lado de tu vuelvo loco, loco So I think where I'm going to start is just with the vocals themselves that you hear in the chorus. I have uh, these guys right here. There's the main one. I have some backing harmonies right here, which is kind of talking. I really like that. Then I have these guys, which is just left and right stereo singing to back it up. And then we have these. Which is kind of a mix of talking and singing which is cool and then i also layered it with uh this guy right here which is the main lead that i you know rendered out and pitched up an octave and put subtly in the background it sounds not that great by itself but when you pair it with the main vocal it sounds pretty good <laughs> It adds more texture to the track there. And as far as the effects that I put on the vocals themselves, uh, really it isn't too complicated. What I started out with was just a Maximus where in the low end, I was really uh, making sure that the low end of the vocal didn't go too high. You can see where the bands are. Anytime, because anytime the vocal went down that low, I really wanted it to be controlled. So I did that right there. It doesn't do too much, but I didn't really do much in the mids, just a little bit of compression. Just mainly on the peaks. And then on the high end, I not only compressed it down, but I also kind of brought it up around here too to make sure that the high end was always kind of present in the mix. So that's what that's com that compression is for. And you can hear uh, without these effects, you can hear what it sounds like just by itself. It still sounds good, it's just not quite as loud and it doesn't have the reverb on it. But the next thing I did, just a touch of sound goodizer, this actually isn't really doing much at all. I could take that off and it would have, you know, little to no effect on the sound. As far as the EQ, I'm just rolling off the low end and I'm cutting down a couple of frequencies here that I tend to cut with all vocals, period, no matter how they're recorded. It tends to open them up and make them sound a little less nasally, right in this sort of 3K to 2K range. So I did that. And then I have it running through a soft clipper that looks like this. That's just adding a little bit of saturation on top of the vocal. It's not too much. 
Then after that, it's going into uh, Serum Effects, which is basically all I'm using this for is a chorus, a delay, and a reverb. Is I'm just I just have all three of these just in one plugin, and well, the chorus isn't even on. I could take the chorus off, and and then it would be exactly the same, just delay and reverb with this right here. And that doesn't have to be done just through Serum Effects. There are tons of plugins that do that. And then lastly, just a limiter. <laughs> just to compress the really high peaks. And then pretty much all of these other vocals have like the same effect chain, right? I think they just have like a little more reverb than the main vocal, just because I wanted the main vocal to sit a little more up front in the mix, while the other ones were, you know, off to the side and they had more reverb and delay and stuff like that. So that's just the main difference. But other than that, that's, that's really all I did to these vocals. <laughs> And the fact that there's just four or five layers going right here is what makes it sound so thick and rich and nice. After that, this clip is muted. I have some chords. Where I basically just went through the acapella and I figured out what chords kind of went with it. And then I, I laid those out. And right now this is just on some, some a little bit of a cheesy synth from uh, Flex right here. This is called Seventh Soul. You can see it plays that kind of pattern and it's not apparent that that pattern was being played when you're listening to it it's really one of those things that uh, if you take it out is when you'll notice it even then there isn't too much of a difference this is just a backing synth and then along with that i have these chords playing the the exact same chords it's just but it's a different preset this is creepy drone and it sounds a little broken and weird And now you can get a better idea of exactly what those chords are that I was playing. No, no fancy, uh, no fancy chord rhythms. It's just chord, chord. You know, every every beat. And the next element I added was this uh, this sort of funky sounding bass. This analog bass uh, preset that wasn't Harmer. I did dabble at presets a lot in this demo track just because I wasn't focusing on the sound design. I was mainly trying to highlight the vocals and, you know, what they could do in making a decent track. But there's this, uh, the analog bass preset in Harmer is doing this. So that rhythm of the bass, you know, kind of makes a polyrhythm between the kick and the other drums that I'm about to go over in a sec. But that bass layers pretty well with these chords and, and synths we have going here. Then the next synth I added is more of a lead kind of bell pluck thing. And that's just a preset that I threw together using uh, the noise oscillator as a sampler in uh, Serum. I also have a little bit of an accent melody, like an accent synth here, and you can hear exactly what this is doing. And this is just, uh, I believe this is another preset that I made in Harmer. It's just kind of a pluck thing that I have using the pluck oscillator and I, I made some weird, did some weird things with the pluck shape on just a saw wave. It's like a wall of sound. And then I low passed it so you don't get any super high frequencies. And I just played this little pattern right here. You see I'm sliding up and then doing the thing that you just heard. And all together that adds just a nice little texture to, you know, that, that few moments that I play it. And then moving on from this one, we have the drums. I have a tambourine, which is meant to be paired on top of this kick. This is just a basic, you know, snappy house uh, trance kick right here. And the, the tambourine is pretty simple as well. Um, over that, I have this uh, ride playing this pattern. And even though it's not something you notice right off the bat, it really does add to the mix. It adds some noise and it fills it out. Now these are percussion loops. I'm going to get to those in a moment. But after that, I have a little bit of a snare that I'm adding here. 
And this is just like, it's, it's not a ghost snare, but it's like an accent snare. I'm saying accent a lot in this video, but uh, basically it's just there to provide some rhythm and some polyrhythm to the actual main kick in a rhythm that you're probably pretty familiar with. It's a very familiar pattern in a lot of different kinds of music. And then after that, I added these claps on every second kick. So we have this clap right there. And then we have this clap. So it all adds together like this to get your basic kind of EDM beat. And then to make sure that, you know, the Latin kind of ethnic side of things is mixed in, I added these percussions from this percussion loop. That loop is from the ultimate percussion library from Ghost Hack. But uh, when I chopped it up and added it where I wanted to, it ended up sounding like this. And then after that, the only other things I added to this would be uh, some uh, sound effect noisy symbol that is just an FL Studio sample. We have a, a crash symbol right here. And then I actually used uh, some horns, like some brass. And this is actually a really dark brass hit, but it's not very loud. I brought it down so it's not super apparent in the mix. But altogether, it all lines up to sound like this. And then after that, we have this kind of little fill moment where the vocal extended for just a couple of beats longer than the actual, you know, bar did. So I decided to leave it as that little kind of transition fill moment. So there's a delay before it goes into the next part. And we're going to go into this next part right now. Because this part is a lot of fun. You can see I'm definitely uh, taking advantage of these backing vocals right here. I'm using those when I think they sound good. Just uh, backing up this uh, vocal chop. And then I bring in the main vocal for those uh, parts right here and right there. But I want to go over this vocal chop loop that I did. And in fact, I want to try to find the spot that I actually took for this vocal chop loop because all you have to do is take a, a, you know, a vocal like this and try to find a spot in the vocal that you think would be good to chop. Oh, it was that spot right here. That T that you hear. I took that one and then I just uh, highlighted the spot itself right here. And then I can kind of fade out this part. And then I kind of want to cut that beginning where you, they ha where she has that pronunciation. And I'm also going to cut that right there and then add a little bit of a fade in. You could do a little less of a fade in if you wanted to and make it a little tighter. Yeah, like that. But once I pitched that around, I added it to a uh, sampler. Now you can really hear that that is the chop that I grabbed. But uh, I added it to pretty much the same vocal chain that I was adding to the rest, like of the vocals, but I added a couple of things. First thing I added was I used Serum Effects to add a little bit of distortion. So you get a little more harmonics on top of there. I just mixed in tube distortion. And then I used both a hyper dimension and a chorus to give it a little more width because there weren't any backing vocals for a vocal chop, you know what I'm saying? So I had I used the dimension and the hyper. Well, I didn't really use a dimension, just the hyper to add a little bit of spread and the chorus to add spread as well. And then also to give it a little more power, I used a multiband compressor, not too much. I didn't go too crazy with it. I just added the multiband in there and then adjust the band so it still sounds clean and powerful. <laughs> And then I made sure at the end here when I knew when, and then I made sure at the end here when I knew the vocals were coming back in to kind of not play anything else with the vocal chops. And then for this outro, you can kind of see exactly what I did. I just, you know, had that same thing going that I did before. I added the little riser right here that I used. 
and then it goes right into a crash. And then I play the melody. There's some ad libs going right there, and I mixed in a lot of echoes. And the melody just fades out, and as do the chords, I had those extend, and it all just fades out to a good conclusion. But that's the main part, and now I want to talk about this intro part. And now if you listen to the actual intro of the beginning of the song, you can hear that I did basically exactly the same stuff that I did in the outro. So let's take a listen. So I use those melodies, those chords, and I have, you know, a very, a very echoey kind of decaying uh, set of ad libs right here. And then I have the riser and it all stops right before the beat hits. And it goes like that to just add a little more accent to uh, the next, you know, upcoming beats. And then I have uh, the vocals, just the main, the main vocals for the verses just playing right here. And they're leading the track in all their, you know, reverb and layered glory. And then uh, these tracks are actually muted right here. These used to be pianos that would help me keep track of like the chord progressions of each part of the song. But what I did was I took uh, these chords right here. And I chopped them up and used them in specific spots because I didn't want the chords to be playing throughout. I just wanted them to hit in certain areas. I did the same thing with the bass. I only wanted the bass to play in certain areas, but it still follows the progression. And that makes this pretty well with the chords. And then after that, uh, I have a kick drum just hitting like this. It's not a very bass heavy kick drum. Sounds kind of trashy, but I, I really like it. I'm okay with it. But you can hear we have this which is that tambourine hitting every time the kick hits, the same tambourine we have in the chorus. And then you can see here's the percussion loop again. And that comes together to make a pretty nice beat. And then also I have the brass one shot, but I just cut it. I didn't leave it in its full length. I just took the last little bit to use right there. And then after that, we have this riser coming in right here and the rhythm kind of stops for this one part. And again, that's just to kind of make the first hit of the next bar hit a little bit harder. And then there's another delay right here before the drums come in. I thought it would be kind of interesting to add that sort of delay with the rest of the drums. You can hear what that sounds like. And what I added differently here is now the kick is on a more consistent pattern. It's playing something that is a lot more, you know, simple. And then I paired it with uh, the claps that I have from the drop. So now your brain's getting more prepared for the 4-4 action that's coming. I have pretty much the same pattern for the chords and the bass, but I changed it up like a little bit. Mainly to fit the kicks and the claps. And then we have the tambourines still playing, and then we have the percussion still playing. And I just chopped them up a little bit more. I also added a couple hits of this snare just because I thought it sounded good in that one moment. And that kind of hints at the snare that is also to come during the drop itself. It's really just for that one moment. And then in this second half, I actually added these rides right here. Remember the rides from the main chorus that we had? And that just adds a little bit more air, a little more texture before the main chorus hits. <laughs> And this next part is actually a lot of fun. I added an interesting effect before it goes into the drop because again, there was a gap where the main chorus and the rest of the vocals didn't exactly fit on rhythm. There was kind of a fill in between. So I decided to use that to just, you know, do some really cool effects to the vocals and then rise up before the main chorus hits. And you can hear exactly what that is.
But really what I did here is you can see I'm automating the serum effects mix level. So this is this is definitely done in serum effects. It's a very easy way to do something like this because you can adjust the mix level with one knob. And then you can see I also have this macro going and I'll show you what that macro does exactly. But let's, let's highlight just the vocals for a second here so I can show you what's going on. Bit, bit, bit. And then it goes back to the normal. So I have a vocal bus right here, which all of the vocals are running through. And what I did was I put on a serum effects and you can see that the knob is off because the mix isn't up right now. But what I did here is I added a little bit of hyper dimension. So it adds, you know, just a little bit, a little bit going here. I added a little bit of flanging and a little bit of uh, phasing to kind of move things around more. I added some chorus and I also added an EQ just to boost it up a little bit. It wasn't quite as loud as I needed to be because when I use this flanger plus filter, it, you know, it kind of, it brings the volume of the sound down. I didn't want that to happen, but the flanger plus filter is really, you know, what's doing the work here. That's adding a bunch of peaks and valleys in the spectrum spectrum of uh, just like of the frequency spectrum and I'm moving them around with macro one which is connected to the cutoff so watch this knob move well it might be easier to see macro one move and then you can see the little dot that follows But you can hear what happens when I bring the resonance up to really increase those peaks and valleys we get some weird sounds I didn't want it to be that apparent and that obvious. I just wanted to have a slight metallic kind of weird phasing flanging tone. And this was a good way to kind of achieve that. I also moved the pan around. So, you know, each side of your headphones has a different uh, setting for the flanger, which makes it even more stereo. And once again, I'm going to use the word accents, but this is a really interesting way to add, you know, accents and, you know, just something unique to your vocals to make them a little bit different, especially before you go into something like a main chorus, if it breaks and you have these effects going. But in the end, obviously, without these vocals, this track would be very boring and pretty much nothing. I'd never be able to release this. But the presence or absence of vocals can 100% make or break a track. And if you're interested in using Latin vocals of this style to use in your own tracks royalty-free, you can follow the link in the description if you're on YouTube, and it'll bring you right to the page where you can listen to this demo track and purchase the pack if you like. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the demo track or you like the pack itself, let us know what you think in the comments below. And I will see all of you in the next video. Happy producing. Hey,